What is up, everybody? I got a question, and I'm going to answer it. Uh, would you please consider doing a video for new traders with no previous experience? Uh, a roadmap for the first year of trading. I saw the Dom video series, but how should one progress after tick drills? So he's referring to my uh, order flow for beginner series. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. But he wants to know when you go from sim to live. I do have a video on that. Um, he also wants to know how do you build up from there. So let's get into it. Um, what I definitely suggest, first and foremost, is I can't really give you a roadmap. I know that sounds fucking crazy. And the reason being is it depends what you're fucking trading. So first and foremost, here's the roadmap, I guess. First and foremost, you need to res research the key differences between products. So what, what do I mean in this? You need to know the difference between equities, um, cryptocurrency, options, forex, and futures. Uh, they're different. Okay? What makes them different? Well, with futures... Everything is on a singular exchange. So therefore, all of the order flow you see is going to come to one place. Therefore, a depth of market actually works for futures. Futures is probably the only product where the depth of market is actually going to work. Uh, when you're trading other things like cryptocurrency or equities, there's multiple exchanges. So therefore... When you see a limit order at, say, the price of $10, $10, there's going to be multiple orders at that $10 price across the different exchanges. Whereas $10 in futures, you're going to see all the orders on $10. That's it. And again, in equities, uh, there could be you know 100 orders on this exchange, 200 on this a thousand on this exchange and if you want to queue up into the trade you're gonna have to pick one of those exchanges I'm not an equities expert and people often ask me does order flow or the depth of market work in cryptocurrency not really um, because much like equities there's different exchanges so you're gonna be not seeing all the orders like I would trading futures so equities uses a level two to display this data you can't really do a dom in equities i mean jigsaw trading and by the way if you would like to save 30 dollars on jigsaw trading link in the description that's the platform i use for execution it really helps or if you would like to donate to my coffee page link in the description as well anyways it's not going to really work on cryptocurrency because there's multiple exchanges. Uh, Jigsaw does have a DOM to where you can use it on equities, but it's going to look a little weird and you need to trade specific stocks to make it work better. And you can only use one brokerage house when you use the stock on the DOM. And it's just this whole weird shit. Um... Forex is not a transparent market, from what I hear. So you're not going to see the order flow at all. And a lot of people think Forex is a scam because of this. Guys, if you want a better visual reference of what I'm talking about, watch this video down here. Uh, where is it? <clears throat> this one, order flow in different markets. Uh, watch this. I show you a level two and how it's different in equities and just how the order flow is going to be a bit different. Um, so futures is just, honestly, I think futures is a really good day trading product because it simplifies all that shit, just being on one exchange. So with that said, I can't give you really a roadmap if you're not trading futures. I especially the ESE Mini, because if you're going to be trading other stuff like bonds or crude oil, those are just different. I, I'm a, 
I would I guess I'm a specialist, meaning I just trade one thing. That's all I fucking know. So this I can't even give a fucking roadmap on that. So what this will be is if I was to get into a DeLorean time machine and go back to the future and the fat cat now was able to talk to fat cat back in the day, these are the things I would tell myself. Uh, is it going to apply for you? Not necessarily. Uh, because uh, your journey is going to be very fucking unique for who you are, what you know, your psychology, all of that shit. So, I'm going to try. Take it with a grain of salt. Next thing you need to do is comprehend order flow. Okay? So, what do I mean by that? You guys have all probably seen the fucking how to read a Dom video. If you haven't, go watch it unless you know how to Dom works. And then watch limit order versus market order. I'm surprised this does not have as many views as the Dom video because you need to understand the difference between limit orders and market orders. Like you really do. Be no matter what you're trading, when you're trading cryptocurrency or even Forex, whatever your even options, there are limit orders and market orders. And by just looking at a DOM in a futures market, it'll help you understand what's going on in those other markets because those orders interact with each other exactly the same way they do in the futures market. Although there are multiple exchanges in these other markets, so that's going to be a little different. Not sure how dark pools work either, so it's going to be a little bit different. But the concept of limit orders and market orders, uh, they are pretty much the same across any kind of market, even real life. Uh, for instance, if I'm selling my car for $1,000, that means I'm a limit order. And if you come and buy it for $1,000, you are the market order. You hit my bid. Whereas if I'm selling the car for a thousand dollars, but you don't want to pay a thousand, you said I'll give you nine hundred for it. Well, you're a limit order. I'm a limit order, and nothing's gonna happen. There will be no transaction until one of us becomes a market order and hits the other guy. So I can hit his offer at nine hundred, or he can hit my bid at a thousand. If I hit his offer, that means I became the market order. Ooh, my voice like cracked i am going through puberty again as a 35 year old man anyways so with that being said limit orders and market orders are just how it is across the board when you go to the grocery store the price that's listed is the limit order whereas if you go to one of these markets where you can haggle well then it's not limit order prices you can become the limit order or if you decide to negotiate on a a piece of real estate or a car so really you need to understand order flow as a whole i think being able to see it in futures is a lot easier than other markets but then again i'm a specialist um so when i say comprehend the order flow understand how it influences the charts understand that when you're looking at a candlestick and you see a hammer pattern just because you see a hammer pattern doesn't mean it was created on the same type of volatility. It doesn't mean it was created on the same type of volume. Uh, the DOM could have been thicker or thinner in that specific period. So anytime you see these candlestick patterns, and while they may look exactly the same, it could have been created on wildly different types of order flow. There could have been some guy iceberging in order. There could have been a bunch of canceling of orders. And that information is important. And just understanding that all markets are being driven off order flow and all your price action and charts are built off of these numbers coming in through your time and sales and hitting the limit orders on the DOM. Just understanding that is so fucking important because... That's information, and information is power, right? If you have more information than the next guy, you have an edge, technically speaking. Obviously, trading is a lot harder than that. 
So you really need to spend time understanding this shit. Spend time researching shit. Spend time researching basic shit like technical indicators, uh, tr price action, price action patterns, order flow, time and sales. Just consume a shitload of materials. Spend an ample amount of months consuming as much as you can about trading. Okay, not just trading strategies, but all sorts of other shit. Um, from there, get a feel for trading for about a week. So get a demo and start trading for a week. Feel it out. What does it feel like when I place a limit order? What does it feel like when I press a, the market order button? Uh, like, just get a feel for it, because watching it is going to be a lot different than playing the game. It's like watching sports versus playing sports. Uh, it's different. So get you need to get a feel for it, okay? After that, tick drills. Trade tag, record, and review trades. So I have a series, in case you don't know, called the learning to read order flow for beginners you start with this video you go to the part two and part three watch all three of them and i suggest you do exactly what i say in that series and you do it for a month okay again you don't have to like i really don't give a shit what you guys do but i was asked so i am sharing so spend a month doing tick drills without charts. Damn it. Um, everybody uses charts. Don't use charts because you need to learn to read order flow and then your attention gets split. Your attention gets split between the chart and the DOM and then you're not paying attention to the DOM. The purpose of tick drills is to learn to use specific order types and specific conditions. When should I use a limit when should i use a market you should learn to use both not one or the other otherwise you're really doing yourself a disservice um you're gonna learn to get faster you're gonna learn not to have your cursor way to fuck on the other side of the screen you're gonna learn how to keep it in a specific area i definitely suggest when you do the tick drills watch my strike zoning the spread bit video down here so watch these videos in that order and then watch the strike zoning the spread video um so that way you can see what i'm looking at why i'm looking at what i'm looking at and how i have my dom set up and why it's set up the way it is start trade tagging you're gonna need some sort of journal software i actually want to pull something up like there's a really fucking solid video uh, that I think all of you guys should watch. It's from S&B Capital. Um, let me actually pull it up. Okay, here it is. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to S&B Capital. It is this video um, right here. Trading tools. It's this video right here. The purple one. It's a newer video. It's called Trading Tools. How to See and Adjust. Uh, the title is fucking cut off. How to see and adjust. How to see and make adjustments. Uh, you need to add something. Uh, anyways, here. Let's just look at this. Okay. So th I know it's a lot of colors and shit, but this is a good way to create a, a trade tagging playbooking system uh, in just a simple spreadsheet. If you get uh, Jigsaw Trading, uh, you'll have access to Journal Ticks. It does, I don't know if they're giving it away for the first year for free anymore, but a, I would ask. But when I got uh, Jigsaw, they gave you Journal Ticks the first year for free. Um, full access to where you could actually trade tag and shit. There's other things like TraderView, and I'm not talking about TradingView, the charting platform. TraderView is a journaling software. There's so many out there. 
You're going to need something. Otherwise, you're going the old school way. And honestly, it's a pain in the fucking ass. So, like, having an, a specific journaling software is actually worth the fucking money. But this guy, he'll break down all of these sections. It's day, execution, risk throughout this video. And this is something you can actually just do in a fucking spreadsheet. This video is so good. And then he talks about, like, the plays, all that shit. This is a solid fucking video. Uh, trade category, the ticker, uh, the setup score, A, A minus, risk, expression, all sorts of shit. And he breaks down all of the little sections. It's such a solid fucking video. And I'm glad that this video came out recently. Um, so this, watch this. This should give you a good idea of how to trade tag. You don't need to go in depth like this. So if you're brand new and you're doing tick drills, I suggest um, I suggest here, let's just do it here. I suggest you start tagging uh, the trades. Uh, just grade your entries and exits. Well, actually, you just need to grade your entries because you're doing tick drills, so you shouldn't really need to grade your... Well, you could grade your exits if you want. So these are some tags I use. Feel free to copy them. Oh, Jesus. So you can have uh, too early. So were you too early? You can have good entry. Was it a good entry? And my tags look goofy. Uh, actually, let's just do it. Entry too early, entry good. Uh, entry late. Uh, chase trade and no reason. Oh, Jesus. So you can use those tags. And I suggest the first month you're doing your tick drills, grade those entries. Like, actually grade them. And then... What you can do is you can look at, you could color code them like in this one video because he color codes shit. See how there's color coding up here? It tells you what, you know, what does the color code mean? So you could color code all of these differently in a spreadsheet. So export your demo trades into a spreadsheet and then start color coding them. So that way you can see if maybe you're tr chasing too much and then you can start to fucking nip that in the ass. Um, you want to record and review your trades. You've got to record and review your fucking trading session. You've got to review, you've got to record and review your fucking trading session. You know how many of you motherfuckers don't do that shit? You know how many of you motherfuckers don't do that shit? And then you go do it later and you're like, oh, I should have done it the whole fucking time. I've heard that shit so many fucking times. So I'm telling you to fucking do it now. All right? Otherwise, you're going to kick yourself in the ass. Uh, nobody ever fucking listens to me anyway, so it doesn't even fucking matter. But this is what I would tell myself if I was to get into that DeLorean. I would grab my shirt like this, and I'd twist it, and I'd be like, Hey! Fucking review. Record, review your trades, and tag them. And I'll be like, ah! Okay, okay. So, probably fucked my shirt up. Yeah, anyways, do it. You can use OBS. It is free. What the fuck is OBS? Uh, well, let me pull it up for you. Just literally Google it or DuckDuckGo it. Open broadcast software. It is free. Download it. Streamers use it for video games. Get yourself a YouTube account and then live stream privately to your channel. That's how my channel started. I didn't start this fucking channel to fucking entertain you people. I started it to privately record and store my recordings elsewhere. That's the beautiful thing about YouTube is you can store massive video files elsewhere. You can do it on your computer if you want. So do that for a month. No fucking charts. Again, no fucking charts. No charts. No charts. Why?
Why no charts? I told you already. Why should you? Because you need to pay attention to the order flow. And it needs to start to become second nature in some ways. All right. Where do we go from here? Journal, visual, visualizations, and goal setting. Yes, journaling. The one thing that none of you fucking want to do. Now, right, look. This question was asked. I'm fucking telling you. And if you guys want to sit there and finger pop your fucking asshole for years, feel free. Feel free to do that. But if you want to actually fucking get somewhere, do the work now. Because if you don't do the fucking work now, over time, you're going to eventually have to come back and revisit and doing do this kind of shit. So get it done now. Or else you're going to prolong your fucking learning curve. Everybody wants to be a trader until you have to do trading work. So you can literally do this at the same time you're doing this. Oh, Jesus. You can literally do this at the same time you're doing this. So write your fucking thoughts down during the session. Am I getting fucking pissed? Am I getting upset? Am I feeling FOMO? And then at the end of the week, let's look at that. Is there a problem there? Am I noticing a pattern in my behavior? Because at some point, the psychological aspect is going to come and fuck you. And it ain't going to feel good. And you didn't ask for it. So, you better fucking recognize that. And when you recognize that you're having some sort of issue psychologically, let's set some goals. Let's set a weekly. Don't set too many goals. Do not set too many goals. And continue to relentlessly work on one fucking goal until you are achieving it. I don't. And dude, if you set it and achieve it in one day, the first day you set it, continue to do it for at least a full week. Okay? And before each session, I want you to visualize you achieving the goal. Meditate. And then visualize achieving the goal. Because visualization is just as powerful as actually doing it. Okay, so visualize it. Use a loop timer, which is a timer that goes off as m every 5 seconds, every 10 minutes, every 20 hours, whatever you want to do. And every time it goes off, reconnect with your goal. Or you can do an audio recording of you talking about, for instance, I don't move stops. I do not move stops. I do not move stops. I do not move stops. And you can have that loop in the background through some sort of audio. Well, if you got the YouTube channel, you can put it on there, overlay it with some beautiful sounds like a stream or birds chirping turn it down to where you can barely fucking hear it and play it throughout the session okay because we're gonna have to work on all the bullshit you're getting you're getting you guys all make the same fucking mistakes you guys all do the same stupid shit okay nobody's unique with your fuckery okay and you're gonna make a uh, fucking stupid mistakes you're gonna start averaging in the losers and just chasing and just everything that everybody's done it i've done it okay i fortunately have never averaged into losers this never was really a problem with me if you're doing it you're gonna have to learn how to fucking stop and if you don't actively work on trying to fix this shit well guess what you're gonna struggle and you need to be creative. You need to make specific solutions for specific problems and actively work on it until it's not a problem. And during this entire fucking process, up until this point, PL is not the fucking goal, man. If you've not watched this video, day trading, why does it have a high failure rate and how to fix this? Watch that video. Okay? And pay close attention to what I'm fucking saying in it. p and is not the goal. Now is the time to learn. It is your first fucking year. And if you're going to try to make money in the first month or two, 
You're going to fuck yourself. It ain't going to work. You ain't going to make money the first fucking year when you're trading ESE minis. All right? Sure, you might do it for a little bit, but wait until the conditions shift. Wait from when we go high volatility to summertime or from the summertime to high volatility. And when you experience your first fucking market meltdown, you ain't going to know what to fucking do. All right. Lauren auction market theory. You need a trading system. Man, my throat is dry and I just nothing in here to drink. The show must go on. Learn some sort of system. I suggest auction market theory. Okay, because it's just it's badass. It's it's a religion. It's a cult. If you want to drink the Kool Aid, join. Um, learn as much about auction market theories you can possibly learn. Google it, YouTube it, Twitter it. Just comb through shit. There's a book called Mind Over Markets. I have a video that touches on it. If you really look at my channel, there are very individual lessons. It's a bit old. It could be better. It's this red video over here on the right. Go watch that. Okay? So auction market theory, learn it, okay? In the meantime, you want to not learn auction market theory until after the month of tick drilling. Okay, where do we go next? So you want to do one month of scalping using auction market theory pr principles and you want to trade your tags. Tra trade your tags and trade tag. Oh, okay. So now you want to start to look at charts. Now you want to start to attempt to scalp and not pick up a tick. Because in the tick drill, your job is to pick up a tick. No more than a fucking tick. Okay? No more than a fucking tick. If you can get a little more because it just happened to go up, that's fine. But don't bend the fucking rules. You need to really focus on trying to do exactly what I'm saying when you're brand fucking new. And again, I don't give a fuck if you don't do any of this shit. I really don't. So, it's up to you. So, and I kind of just made all this shit up. But again, this is what I believe in and what I would do if I went into the DeLorean time machine and slapped myself in the face and said, Hey... Let's not take five years to f get good. Let's do it a lot sooner. This is how. So you want to grade your entries. Now what you need to do is start grading your exits. Here are some examples. Now, I hope you're screenshotting and taking notes. Did you exit early? Was the exit good? Was the exit late? Could you not react? Maybe the market just moved so fast you couldn't even do anything about it. Or did you move your fucking stop? Again, we got this video from SMB. So what we can do is start color coding shit if you're not using some sort of journaling software. Okay. Do that for a month. Now we're kind of moving from tick drills to actually trading some sort of principle. Okay. Next, what you want to do is screenshot charts and make notes of patterns. You want to do this at the same time you're doing this. So now we're about two months and a week into our trading adventure. Obviously more. You should spend a few months just learning up here. But anyways, this is when we actually got our demo account. If you're using Jigsaw Trading, again, 30 bucks off. My affiliate link down below. And there's a coupon code after you use the affiliate link. Buy the product once. And then what you can do is um, open up an account, connect the trade data, and then just demo trade for very little money for as long as you need to. You can Obviously, you can use Sierra Charts as well if you would like. That's another good alternative. They have better charting than Jigsaw. Jigsaw's trying to get better at charting, but it's really what whatever you want to do. You need to do the fucking research. 
anyway, screenshot charts and make notes of patterns. Look for stuff that's making sense to you. Playbook it. Mike Bellafuri has a book on playbooking. Okay, read that book or go to SMB and just type playbook. So let's do that now. So we'll go here, type in playbook. The play, there's just so much shit about playbook stuff. You, he has a book on it. Um, this one's these videos are good. Where how what to become an elite trader. But he has a he has a book out there somewhere called the playbook. You can read it. That's essentially what you're doing with this. You need to screenshot your charts, make notes of the patterns, stuff that's making sense to you that you're seeing because you're going to have to somehow fucking find edge. And you're doing it again at the same time as this. Next. So... Once we start to find patterns and shit, hopefully you're finding fucking patterns... Now we're going to spend four months, so a total of six months at this point. You're going to do advanced trade tagging and playbook for four months. So now you're going <coughs> to... Excuse me. I really need water, and this is a live stream. Because I don't feel like editing. So... What did I just do? Ah, yeah. So you can do... Advanced trade tagging. So are my trades working better on the first test or a pullback? Okay, my shit has weird symbols. Don't worry about it. Um, am I reversing the position? Do I get in long, get get out, and then get back in short? I want to know that. How many tries are these taking? One, two, three tries? Ten tries? Uh, is this high volatility, medium volatility, or low volatility? Um, am I getting in exactly at my playbook area, or am I getting in somewhere else? Um, are there multiple factors of support for my trade entry, or are there no multiple factors of support? These are all things I want to fucking know. Okay, so with that being said, you need to be creative. Here's some more, clean or dirty. So what does this mean? When I'm getting in, are there specific levels above my price that might cause confluence or cause issues where the trade's not going to work out? Then it's dirty. If I'm getting into the trade, is there nothing really in front of it that could potentially deflect it back? Then it is clean. These are tags I actually fucking use. So, again, the first month we did, we're grading our entries. The second month, we're grading our entries and our exits. Okay, now the next four months, we're going to make more advanced stuff. You're going to start playbook tagging your stuff. It's a lot easier with journal ticks. You can still use that SMB method that I showed you with that one video. Um,. So where do we go from this point? So while you're doing this, you want to refine your setups. You want to start to hold longer, unless you plan on becoming a scalper. But even, really, guys, I, I'm i going to tell you that once I started holding trades a lot longer, I just become way better. Scalping is cool and shit. But don't be this micro scalper. I find a lot of new people are micro scalpers and shit. And I just find a lot of the better quality tr traders that are just making real money are actually holding their trader trades out longer. Yeah, you can be a scalper and shit. That's cool. Uh, but even then, you want to refine your scalping. So while you're doing this, you want to be refining your setups. I want to. Can I hold longer? This is the importance of recording and reviewing your trades. This record and review never fucking stops. You continue to do this for the life of your fucking trading journey. Okay? So I want to start to trade only the best setups because after each month, 
you want to really look at all your statistics. Do pullback trades work better in high volatility or medium volatility? Are multiple factor support trades working better than no multiple factor support trades? Um, you know, you just want to see where you're performing. On average, do I start to trade like shit after three, four, five tries? Or is one or is two to three tries perfect? Because if I know that information, then I'll know where I can start to not hit the setup anymore if it's not working. So do I need to take multiple shots in high volatility? And in low volatility, is it better to take only one shot at this? These are things you want to do. And when you're doing your monthly review, you want to spend a tremendous amount of time looking at the individual tags and stats and the individual setups because now you're crafting your edge. And trading edge, setups with actual statistical edge, um, shit, dude, it ain't easy and it takes time. And I've thrown away, starting this year, I threw away like 75 playbook setups they just didn't happen every fucking day. So trying to find a setup with edge that happens pretty much every fucking day is not as easy as you think. This is going to be a majority of the problem. And also, when you're doing this, you need to try to trade without emotions. You need to try and take the trade... <coughs> excuse me. You need to try to take the trade exactly the way you're supposed to take the trade when you're supposed to take the trade. And that's it. Because if you don't and you start chasing it or trading on emotion, uh, you're going to fuck your statistics up and then you're going to really fuck up the ability to see if your setups actually have statistical edge because you keep fucking around. And I don't give a shit if the trade fails three, four, five times in a row. Keep trading it the way you're supposed to because that's the thing. If you're going to flip a coin and you make a dollar and 50 cents every time it lands on heads and you're going to lose a dollar every time it lands on tails well who wouldn't take that fucking bet you're going to come out on top if you flip the coin long enough right the problem is you might fucking land on tails fucking 10 times in a row so it's going to take five flips just to make that back right i don't know my math's kind of fucked up so understanding that trades with edge and just understanding the casino principle is so vastly important it's like when you go play roulette at in vegas right they have a statistical edge not by much because you have red black or the green double zeros and that is a 51 percent edge and if they spend that long enough they're going to make money so that's the thing traders tend to fuck up and throw away setups because it lost two, three, four times in a row. Well, why? Is it because the volatility isn't right? Is there something else going on that makes this setup not good right now? And when it's good, when is it good? Because now I got to shift. Because you're, you're going to need a different bag of tricks depending on the conditions. You really are. Your approach and the way you do it is just going to change as the market environment changes. And that's the problem. You're not going to just walk in the front door start making money in the first three months because the condition shifts will happen and when that happens you're gonna get fucked up anyways so you want to refine the setups this is happening at the same time as the last two you want to keep refining your trades until consistency and efficiency is achieved. So you want to start to see consistency in your trading. And you're going to stay on demo as long as fucking possible. In my opinion. Again, you don't have to fucking do what I say. And I don't give a shit. Because most people won't. And then they're going to fucking cry and complain that they can't figure it the fuck out. This, this is a job, okay? You're not going to come in here and make millions of fucking dollars or even six figures just being lazy about it. Every, ow, fuck. 
Everybody wants to be a trader until they have to do trader work. All right. Keep refining your trades until consistency. What does efficiency mean? You're not scaling. Uh, and here's the thing. Trade the demo. Don't trade demo on micros. Fuck that shit. Trade actual E-minis. Because once you achieve consistency, you can go to a combine. And get funded. Okay? You can go to a combine and get funded. Trade at least two to three lots, right? Trade anywhere between, it's harder to trade a one lot than it is two because it's so much easier, in my opinion, to scale the trade as it's working in your favor. The more lots you have on, the easier it is to scale outward. Don't be trading 10, 20 lots. Practice with a realistic number, but practice with slightly more than one lot. Two to three to four lots, max. Demo trade that. So that way, you're comfortable with the P&L swings. And you can see roughly what your drawdown would be. And if you do a combine, you can do the appropriate combine. So maybe do one that allows you to trade 15 lots. Because you want to get uh, a bigger drawdown. And if you know you can stay within a $1,000 drawdown limit on four lots then do that so become efficient though that the, the efficiency is huge this is something i'm still working on i'm not scaling up past my four lots until i can start to squeeze more out of the trade i want to draw down less and squeeze more out of the trades because there's so much more room for improvement in my specific trading and once I can become a lot more efficient with my trading, I'm going to make more on the same amount of size. Because if you start to try to remedy the pro, you can try to remedy it by adding on size and to make more. But become efficient. Becoming efficient is going to really help you in the long run. So draw down less and make more on your trades. Learn how to run them further. Learn when you need to start cutting them. Become more efficient with what you have. And when you do, it's going to make a world of difference when you start to scale up size. So once you're starting to see consistency, uh, we need to zoom out. Give me a second, guys, because I, I'm i in the way. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Live trade, A plus, sets, A plus setups only. Switch to demo for lesser setups. So once you really start to identify what your A plus setup is, live trade it. You, now, if you've been trading three, four lots, did, you may want to do it on one lot, two lots maybe, or maybe you can skip this step and go to a combine. So instead of doing these A-plus setups, I suggest go to a combine. I don't care if you have the actual bankroll. I suggest you do it because it it's better to lose somebody else's money than yours. And I didn't write that in there. I definitely suggest you go to a combine, pass it, feel what it feels to trade real money. Because unfortunately, throughout this entire process, you're not going to understand that feeling until it really happens. Don't do it on your own money. If you want, you can. Make sure you know what your A-plus setups are. At this point, you should be confident in what your A-plus setups are. You need to build consistency, efficiency, and you need to be confident with your A-plus setups. So that way, if you do choose to trade your own live money, uh, it's not going to be as scary for you because you understand the setup. You're confident in the setup. If you're starting to 
choke and freeze up and have problems, you need to write that down in your journal. And what you need to do is immediately switch back to demo. And it's going to be uncomfortable, but you have to a attempt to do it. if you, Because that's the thing. You might start live trading, and you may take two, three, four losses in a row. But if you know the expectancy rate of your trade, and you know it actually has statistical edge, well, you need to continue to flip the coin until it starts to work out in your favor. Only A-plus setups. You want to go back to demo on lesser trades. Okay, and then after that, once overall consistency is reached and you're starting to get comfortable with actually live trading A plus setups and it's not so scary for you anymore, then you can go to full live trading. There is a catch. You want to go back to demo during unfamiliar conditions. We'll go back to that so you can look at it you want to go to demo in unfamiliar conditions if you just now started trading and the conditions change and you don't really get them don't lose money in this go to demo figure it out and then you can rework some of these other steps because like I said you're going to need a whole different approach, a different bag of tricks when you approach the different types of conditions. The way I trade now in this volatility isn't going to necessarily work when the summertime comes around. If you've not experienced something like the COVID crash, you're not going to be able to do it. You don't have any experience doing it. You're going to struggle. You need to be on demo, and you're going to lose a tremendous amount of money in incredibly high volatility environments with a very thin book. So switch to demo, man. There, there's no just going live and not – there's no point in just going live and you don't – oh, I don't go back to demo. I'm just going to lose money. Fuck no. Go back. Get confident again. It's okay. You don't need to go live and then never go back. Another reason to go back is if you're having back-to-back -back losing days. Are you having back-to-back -back losing days? Are you going through a slump? Go back to demo. Get confident again. Maybe something, maybe your approach needs to be different. Let's not lose any more money. Let's stop bleeding and figure out what's going on and fix the fucking problem. Don't continue to lose it. If you're doing a new strategy, if you're developing a new setup or a new strat, switch to demo. On Jigsaw, it's super easy. Again, 30 bucks off, link in the description. It's super easy to bounce between different accounts. All right? Go back to demo to develop a new strategy. I see something new. Let's not piss money away on that. We need to be just trading the best setups anyways. We don't need to be trading shit setups. All you need to do is get good at one specific setup. That's all you need to get good at to make money in this business and then scale it up. But if you want to try something new, don't experiment with live money. Okay? Another reason to go back to demos, if you're going to trade a new product, if I've been trading ESE minis and I want to go trade fucking NASCRAC, I'm sorry, NQ, NASDAQ, and don't trade the same. Let's fuck around with it on demo because we're going to have to adjust our stops and all sorts of shit. The order flow in crude is really weird. Bonds are super slow. Certain setups may not work in those markets. So that's when you should go back to demo. Now, meantime, while all this is happening, reserve one day of the week to do your tick drills. Don't stop doing your tick drills. Continue to do your tick drills. For me, it's usually every Monday afternoon. No charts. Let's continue to refocus because then... At some point when we're trading these setups and shit, we might, we might stop reading tape. 
It's like a batter going into the batting cages. You're going to practice, and that's the thing. Just You're doing this professionally, and you're a professional athlete when you do do this. You need to still set aside time to practice, okay? And going back to tick drills one day out of the week, do it because so you can reconnect to order flow because you might stop paying attention to it and you're just trading setups and then you go back to it and you're like oh fuck i've been blind okay it's like a a professional baseball batter going to the batting cages to just practice there's no point in trying to and that that that's i think that's very valuable so you continue to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to get rid of myself uh, so you guys can take a screenshot. So if you want this, take a screenshot of it right now. Pause the video. And I'm coming back. Okay. With that said, that is what I think the path would be for a brand new trader within the first year. Probably going to take you more than a year. Because you're going to get caught up somewhere in these middle steps. So again, research different products, comprehend order flow, get a feel for trading for a week, do a month of tick drills, trade tag the entries, record and review the trades. Because if you're not recording and reviewing the trades, you're not going to learn shit. Journal, do visualizations. Well, journal, do goal setting, and then visualize those goals. I gave you examples of what to do in the video. Rewatch it if you don't remember. Learn something, some sort of system. I suggest auction market theory. One month of scalping using auction market theory pr principles. Start trade tagging. Now you're going to trade tag your entries and your exits. On the tick drills, you are just doing your entries because all you're doing is picking up a tick. Now we're trying to scalp, and we're trying to scalp for more than a tick. Probably didn't mention that earlier, but try to get more than a tick at this point. Hit better scalps. Because what you want to do is, I think it's, I think a lot of traders are backwards in the sense they want to take big trades first. I think it's important you learn how to scalp and start off small and start to push the trades out further and further over time. So start small, tick drill, tick drill, scalp, scalp, scalp. Bigger trades, bigger trades, bigger trades, bigger trades, bigger trades. So we're going from here to here to here and boom. Okay, we're not trying to just go to here. Okay, screenshot charts, make notes and patterns. This is basically playbooking. It can be very quick. It's up to you. Advanced trade tagging and playbook for four months. While you're doing that, refine your setups. Hold longer trades. Trade the best setups only. Continue to refine your trades until consistency and efficiency is achieved. Start to live trade or go to a combine. Your A-plus setups only. Switch to demo for lesser setups. Once overall consistency is reached, full live trading. But we can go back to demo during unfamiliar conditions. Or if we have back-to-back -back losing days, we're in a trading slump. If we're experimenting with a new strategy or trading a new product. Okay? We're trying to preserve our fucking capital here. We're not trying to make all this money and then do this ballsy, gutsy shit and just shit it away on stupid stuff. Okay? The goal is to make money, not to fucking lose it. And I'm a very, I would consider myself very conservative and I ease my way in. And what I just showed you is how you dip your toe into the water to see if it's okay. And then you slowly go in instead of just diving in and getting fucked up and having no idea what has happened. Okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully that made sense. Let's look at these videos again on my channel. Videos I think you guys should start to watch. Uh, definitely this one, the how to read a DOM, the limit order versus market order. Um, the volume profile videos are very old. They sh Oops.
they need to be updated. Go ahead and watch both of those. Uh, this one's good, Trading with the Whale. I don't remember the trade management video. I think that might be good. I think I talk about managing by hand, which I still do. Um, let's see what else. Uh, trading the news is interesting. Gain edge, become faster. I would watch that. Um, what a advanced order flow, what a scalping session really looks like. This is actually a really good one. It's older. I don't really trade that way anymore, but I would watch that. I would watch all three of these, advanced order flow two and three. Again, they're older. Um, trading gap, TPO introduction. This overnight gaps are a setup, a uh, edge you can try to develop. Um, I do have playbooking videos. I think they're a bit dated. You can look at them. How to handle trading frustrations. Take a walk. When to go live with trading. Again, these are older videos. Um, spoof. Definitely watch that one. Auction market theory. You're going to want to watch that one. Um, if you want to see what COVID looks like and what I started to do, you could watch that potentially. Definitely how to read time and sales. Um, this is when I start to go long term. Let's see. Here we go. This is a better trade management. Why managing trades by hand makes a difference. So this one's actually better. Uh, this newer stuff you're going to want to be more into. So... Definitely watch my Zen series videos. Oh, definitely watch part one, two, and three. There's a playlist. Viewer, this uh, changing gears is a good one. Definitely the support and resistance one. This one uh, is okay. Playbooking from scratch. This is a super long series, but it's pretty good. Fighting for price. So this fighting for price video, definitely. How to create a playbook template for free. Yes. Um, this sweet spot video, definitely. 100%. Watch that one. Um, advanced tape reading. Yes. Obviously the order flow for beginners. This X key one is good as well. If you want to know more about the macro pad shit. Uh, so from this point forward, from big absorption, from here all the way down, I would watch all of these. So I'm a bit iffy on some of these other ones. You, you can, if you'd like, it's all good, but definitely from, uh, you know, f pullback continuation trade, the big absorption, even the footprint from here. Don't marry a trade. Yes. Trading context is a must. I don't know why there's only 1.7 views on that. Trading slumps is good. But I would, from there, from, from big absorption, all of these. All of them. You don't have to watch the 5,000 sub if you don't want to. When to roll over? Probably, yes. Um, and behind me is my 2022 year in review. So, and you can watch this if you're interested. I would, the one with uh, Frozen, because he has Trading Edge in that. That's actually working, and it's still working, even though that's a two-month-old video. So those are just some videos I suggest. Um, context is huge. That's probably one of the most important ones. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope. Maybe this gives you a roadmap. I don't fucking know. But I will see you in the next video.